hey, thank you so much for watching. I know it's crunch time. You got a paper due. I'm here to help you. So let's get to it. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the most common types of sources that you're going to be citing on your MLA works cited paper. For each one, we'll look at the format that it's supposed to follow, and then we'll take a look at an example from the real world. So let's go ahead and get into it. Cool, so I recognize it's not 1995 anymore, which means the most common thing you're trying to cite is probably a website. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the format is supposed to look like for a website. Alright, cool. So if we're going to cite a website or a page on a website, this is what it's going to look like here. You're going to put the last name, comma, first name, and a period. So that's the last name and first name of whoever wrote the article or the web page or website that you are referencing. After that, you're going to put the title of the web page itself in quotation marks. So that's not the title of the entire website, just the web page that you're referencing. You'll end that with a period inside the quotation marks. And then in italic font, you're going to put the name of the website, or as MLA refers to it, the container. You're going to follow that with a comma. You're going to put the publication date, which is going to follow a specific format, which is the date number, abbreviated month, and the year. You're going to follow that with a comma, and then you'll put the shortened URL. Um, when I say shortened URL, all I mean is it doesn't have the HTTPS colon slash slash on there. And then you end it with a period. Now, optionally, you can put the date that you accessed this source. That's not required anymore in MLA uh, 8th edition. Whether or not you choose to put this is ultimately up to you and your teacher. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at a real world example. Great. I found this article on a website called Zeddy. So that's going to be the website name. The page title would be What Should I Major In? How to Choose a Major in Nine Steps. If it were only that easy, maybe Christian Eilers can help us out here. So I can see Christian Eilers is the author. I don't need to include this title. And I have the publication date listed right here. Cool. So let's go back to our works cited page and see how we would actually cite this. Awesome. Okay. You can see I've got Christian Eilers here. It's last name, comma, first name. I have that title of the article itself in quotation marks and I end it with a period. In italic font here, I've got Zeddy, which is the name of the website. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Followed by a comma, and then the date, and this is that abbreviated format I was talking about. So you can see I have 22, abbreviated November, and the year 2019, followed by a comma, and that shortened URL, which again just means it doesn't have the HTTPS colon slash slash. Odds are when you copy and paste the URL into your Google Doc, it's going to keep that HTTPS colon slash slash on there. You just need to delete that and end it with a period. And when you paste the URL into your document, if Word decides to format that as a hyperlink, just hit control Z and it'll get rid of that. All right. Another common source that some of you old school bookworms out there might use is a book. Let's take a look at the format here. You're going to put last name, comma, first name, period. You're going to put the title of the book in italic font. Now you'll notice we don't have it in quotation marks. That's because, as mentioned before, the book itself is the container as MLA refers to it. Follow that with a period, and then you're going to put the city of publication. Now that's only necessary if this is a super old book published before 1900. You're going to follow that with a comma, and then you'll put the publisher, a comma, and the publication date, followed by a period. Now, the publication date is oftentimes just going to be the year that the book was published. All right, so let's take a look at a real-world example here. All right, cool. If you haven't read Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, I strongly recommend it. We're going to go ahead and cite this one in our paper. So you can see it's by Tim Ferriss. It came out in 2016. And this is the title of the book here. We're going to cite the full title. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like on our Works Cited page. Okay, awesome. We've got Tim Ferriss here, last name, comma, first name, period. Got the full title of the book in italic font, and we end that with a period. And then we put the publisher, which is Houghton Mifflin Harcourt in this case. And yes, I did have to Google how to pronounce that. I'm not super proud of it. Follow that with a comma. And then the year it was released was 2016, and we end the entire thing with a period. All right, so whether you like it or not, your teacher may have required you to use a database article or academic journal article in your paper. So we're going to go ahead and look at the format here. 
So just as before, you're going to put last name, comma, first name of the author, followed by a period. Yes, there is a trend here. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm sorry, I can't help you. After that, in quotation marks and ending with a period, you're going to put the title of the article. After that, you'll put the title of the periodical in italic font. Follow that with a comma. Put the version or edition, a comma, the number, that could be the volume number or publication number, a comma, the publication date, again, that's going to follow the format of the day number, the abbreviated month, and the year. Follow that with a comma. You're going to put the location in the periodical that you found this, so that would be like the page number or the section. Um, if that's not supplied, you don't have to worry about it. And end all that with a period. And then in italic font, you're going to put the name of the database that you found this in. Follow that with a comma. And then you'll put the DOI, which is a reference number that databases use, or you'll put the shortened URL. Again, a shortened URL just means it doesn't have the HTTPS colon slash slash. And then you'll end it all with a period. And just as any other source, you can put the access date, where you put accessed on and then the date that you access the article. But that's no longer required in MLA format, so it's really up to you and your teacher. All right, cool. Let's take a look at a real-world example. All right, cool. So I was on the directory of open access journals and I found this awesome article about the microeconomic behavior of monkeys. Why somebody wrote this, I have no idea, but it's fascinating. So we're going to go ahead and cite this over in our works cited page. You can see it's in Frontiers in Psychology. We've got a publication date here. We have a DOI number here. The only complication in this one is that we have five authors. So there's a specific format that we're going to use according to MLA standards, and I'll show you that on our Works Cited page. Let's hop over there. All right, so I've got our source from the Directory of Open Access Journals cited right here on our Works Cited page. And you can see even though it had five authors, we only have one listed. According to MLA, we're only supposed to list the first author or contributor when there are more than two listed. We put their last name, comma, first name, comma, and then we put this funny little Latin phrase, et al., which is actually shortened for another Latin phrase, which means, and others, which you really don't care about. You're just trying to meet an MLA standard. So end that with a period. And then in quotation marks and ending with a period, you're going to put the title of the article itself, which again, this one's about economic behavior of monkeys. Awesome. Following that, you're going to put the editorial title in italic font. So in our case, that was Frontiers in Psychology. We end that with a comma. We know that this was volume five. Um, it says toward the bottom of that page there. It's going to be in different spots depending on which journal or which source you're getting this from. Follow that with a comma. Ours was published on the 2nd of December, 2014. Now, mine didn't have a version number and it didn't have page numbers. That's okay. You're just putting as much information as you can on the Works Cited page. So I end all that with a period, and then in italic font, I put the Directory of Open Access Journals. Now, before, we had this italic font, which was the editorial name. Now we're actually to the greater container, which is the database that I found this article in. We end that with a comma, and then you put the DOI number. So you put DOI, colon, and then that number here, and end it with a period. So I found this number in our article right here. It's in the URL for this one. Now, because we have the DOI, we don't need to put the full URL. It's actually preferred to have the DOI first, and if you can't find that, you can put the URL. The URL might not have the DOI in it. Cool, and we end that all with a period, just as we do with all of our other sources. Great, so another thing you might wanna cite here in your MLA paper, depending on whether or not your teacher allows it, is a YouTube video. So it's going to follow a similar format as we've seen for the other sources we've got. You put the last name, comma, first name, period. Now that's the creator of the video. If you can't find that, that's fine, but try to do a quick Google search and see if you can. And then in quotation marks, we're going to put the title of the video and end it with a period. And then in italic font, you want to put YouTube. We follow that with a comma, and then you say uploaded by, and you put the name of the channel that uploaded the video. Follow that with a comma. Put the shortened publication date, which is the day number, abbreviated month, and year. Follow that by a comma, and put the shortened URL and a period. And when I say shortened URL, again, I'm just saying drop https colon slash slash off of there. 
All right, cool. Let's head over to the interwebs and find a real life example for this one. Oh, this is the perfect frame to have paused this on. Cool, we've got this video uploaded by a channel called Vsauce. It's actually a super cool channel. You should check it out if you haven't already. This guy makes learning super fun, makes really informative videos. So this video is about things that scare us and he dives into the science behind that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we would do to cite this on a works cited page in an MLA paper. All right, cool, we're back on our works cited page. So you can see I've got the creator's name here, last name comma first. Luckily, my internet machine is working, so I was able to just do a quick Google search and find that. I follow that with a period, and then I put the title of the video in quotation marks. You can see I've got YouTube here in italic font. Now, if you're a hipster who likes to use Vimeo or something, you'd put that here. And you can see it was uploaded by Vsauce. I've got that noted here. I've got the abbreviated date and the shortened URL without the HTTPS colon slash slash. And I end the whole thing with a period. All right, so something else you might want to cite in your paper, again, depending on whether or not your teacher is going to allow it, is a movie. So this follows a slightly different format, and there are actually different ways this can go, but I'm going to show the basic one here. You can see we've got the title of the movie in italic font, followed by a period. We have directed by, and then the first and last name of the director, followed by a comma. And then we put the production company or distributor, a comma, and the year the movie came out, followed by a period. All right, so let's head back to the old interwebs and find a movie that we're going to cite for our paper. All right, cool. So we have Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Because why wouldn't you cite this in an academic paper, right? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what this would look like in our works cited page. You can see we've got the title here. It's directed by Adam McKay. came out in 2006. All right, awesome. Our movie is cited here on our works cited page. You can see we've got Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby in italic font, followed by a period. It was directed by Adam McKay, comma, produced by Columbia Pictures, and released in 2006, and ended with a period. All right, we're almost there. Now, MLA requires that we alphabetize our works cited page. So to do that, it's pretty easy. We're just going to highlight each of these sources we've got. Come up here to this A to Z sorting button that Microsoft Word gives us. Click that. And it should default to this, but we're sorting paragraphs in ascending order. We'll hit OK. Boom. And just like that, we have our works cited page. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you. Be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps support this channel. Comment down below if you have any questions or if this helps you out. Just let me know. Give a thumbs up. I usually respond to comments pretty quickly. Thank you so much for watching.